Thunderbirds are go. With the train precariously balanced on the edge of oblivion, the life of the president hangs in the balance. Will the mysterious Mr. X triumph after all? Thunderbirds 1 and 2 join forces with the indestructible Captain Scarlet in a desperate fight for survival. Time is invaluable. The penalty for delay could be disaster. So reads a leaflet from 1984 promoting the live stage show Thunderbirds FAB during its humble beginnings outside Edinburgh in Scotland. Created by Andy Dawson and Gavin Robertson, the show was a hit and ended up touring the world, bringing characters and craft from the worlds of Supermarionation to life on stage. Oh, 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 wow, uh, 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 golly, <laughs> that's it, I did it, I, I, I actually did it. After years of research, I, I finally made a, a martini. <laughs> Gavin Robertson, who was my partner at the time, and we set up a company called uh, Mind Theatre Project to, uh, to create physical theatre work. And uh, we were looking for an idea that would be uh, an entertaining idea. I mean, we, no one knew who we were, but we knew that people knew what Thunderbirds was and or had a memory of it. And uh, so we thought, well, that's a good way of expressing our kind of uh, theatre through something that somebody would be familiar with. But uh, of course, at the time, we had no idea what uh, a nostalgic trip that would be for everyone. We just thought it was something that people remember, and we remembered it, and we thought that'd be a fun thing to do. Hi, Virgil. Hi, Scott. <laughs> Initially, we thought, what should we make a show about? I mean, where do you start? And you're 22, yeah. you've never made a show before, you don't know anything, really, of making it up. Well, we hired a studio, and so I remember looking, we looked at each other on the first morning, we went, well, how do we start? Yeah. What's scene one? I mean, you know, who comes on first, and what do you say? Because we, we already knew at that point we weren't doing mine. Sure. It was going to be a technique, but it wasn't going to be silent. Yes. Um, and, and we thought, let's make a show about war. Okay, war. And then we had this thing that we thought, a very tenuous, we thought, oh, I know, and the Thunderbirds can swoop in at the end and save the day. And the more we thought about it, we thought, why don't we just do... Why don't we just let's dog the rats and just just do Thunderbirds? Ah, and then of course we went. Well, hold on a second. Jerry Anderson has made all these as Stingray and Joe Ninety and Captain Scott. Let's do that. And then it was a case of deciding what was in or what was out. The concept was nailed down. Now they needed the blessing of the creator himself, and Jerry Anderson was more than happy to oblige. Well, this stage play, in fact, I was involved in, and um, they. My artist came to see me one day and they demonstrated their mime in, in the office, which was very good. And then uh, I said, well, well, how can I help you? And they said, well, um, one of them said, I want a Thunderbird 2 hat. And the other one said, yes, and I want a Thunderbird 1 hat. And I thought, I've got a couple of loonies here. We went to see him in his, uh, in his uh, studio and, and uh, I think he thought we were completely off our rockers, actually, which I'm sure he says so. But, uh, and it was actually in his office that we thought about actually having these models made, because we, he went out of the office to, to answer the phone or to do something. And originally we were going to have little sticks coming out of our shoulders with Thunderbird 1 and 2 out there, so you could be the, you could be the pilot here flying and you'd have this rocket here, so you'd have the duality of the rocket and the pilot. And while we're talking to each other, and he was out of the office, we said, well, that's mad, isn't it? No one's going to see that on the stage, this little rocket. I know, but we'll wear, we'll wear them on our heads. That's what we'll do. And he came back in, and we said, can we have two uh, models of Thunderbird 1 and 2 to wear on our heads? And he just went. So I sent them over to the uh, model shop, and I didn't hear from them for some time. But they, they set up somewhere in a fringe theatre and invited me along, and I reluctantly went, but I was so taken with the idea and what they were doing that I became part of the show and um, helped them as much as I could. Uh, the very first performance was in a place called Westerhales, just outside Edinburgh, where the first 20 minutes was complete garbage and we had to rewrite it because no one knew what the hell was going on. Uh, and then it was at the Place Theatre in Euston, a part of the London Contemporary Dance School. Uh, and then we toured Scotland. It all started off in very, very small venues, very small-scale venues. But we didn't know what we had on our hands at the time. 
And we were very conscious that this was the first thing we were going to do. We didn't want it to be seen as just a piece of old fluff. I mean, yeah. it's entertaining and it is fluff in that sense. Yes. It doesn't say anything deep. Yep. But uh, nevertheless, any homage or pastiche, you know, needs to be done well. Yeah. Um, so the thing I think we spent the most time doing was learning to walk like a puppet. Yes, okay. And given the fact that Andy and I had studied mime and therefore genuinely had a, an ability to analyse movement, uh, the first thing we did was was try and remember how those puppets moved, you know. And of course, that became a comic element that was yeah that was through the show. I mean, the number of venues we left where you'd see people doing that walk down yes. the street, and it did become a thing. Uh, well, Jamie doesn't thank you for it. Oh, afraid. right. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was on all sorts of you know ended yeah. up on all sorts of cameo. It was on Blue Peter and yeah. um, uh, Tomorrow's World. It was hugely popular, and it travelled all over the world. Um. The only thing that I regret about the show is that there's so many panel games now where they say to a contestant, right, we want you to walk like one of Jerry Anderson's puppets. And they do these ridiculous walks and I sit there thinking, in fact, the puppets never walk like that. It's that goddamn Thunderbird show that's done all this.